everyone listened yesterday, of course, if you know how the market works, I'm sure you listened when the U.S. Central Bank Chief or the Fed Chief Jerome Powell gave his testimony to the Congress yesterday talking about the state of the U.S. economy and the signaling for a rate cut this month. Now, Nigeria's Central Bank will also be meeting this month. So everyone who is, everyone, uh, the central banks around the world, uh, are taking a very cue on that. But we have quite a bit more stories to track with Juliana Olayenka, who is one of our team at the at our London uh, Bureau. Thank you so much for coming through from our studios uh, there, as always, every day. Juliana, good morning. Good morning, Boson. How are you this morning? Nice. I got a, a hot cup of tea here, so I'm just managing the weather here a little bit of rain. But it's stopped raining the last couple of days, uh, so I'm trying to stay healthy, drinking more. For, this is a green tea, by the way. Uh, you can see the content was actually a green tea. I uh, used to have coffee, but then I'm, I'm trying to get a lot more, more healthier and, and, and all of that. So how healthy do you think, Juliana, the, the economy of the, the U.S. economy really is uh, based on what Jerome says yesterday, how is the market reacting to that as we trade the first day after that testimony at uh, the Congress? Well, to cut or not to cut, that is the question. Brushing off criticism, very harsh criticism from President Trump, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell hinted there may be scope for an intimate cut to U.S. interest rates when he addressed the House of Representatives Financial Services Committee on Capitol Hill yesterday. In short, Powell echoed what we've heard from several central bank governors in other nations, including here in the UK, and that is the quality of global growth has deteriorated. Now, America did have a strong labor market in June, adding a quarter of a million jobs to payrolls. And of course, there was that highly publicized trade truth between Trump and Xi Jinping. However, Powell played down these factors, stating that he believes the economic outlook hasn't improved in recent weeks, and he emphasized several risks, one being the poor data on growth in Europe and China, which has continued to disappoint, and the second is the fall of Trump's threats to impose new tariffs on Mexico and Europe. Now, Powell has faced sustained public criticism from Trump in recent weeks, as the president is desperate for the Fed to cut rates as a stronger dollar will derail his efforts to boost economic growth. Now, the markets reacted positively to Powell's comments. The FTSE uh, opened up 23 points, taking its cue from Wall Street and the Asian markets. And in currencies, the pound is surprisingly up 0.22% against the dollar today. But let's uh, uh, get home to uh, the UK as far as Brexit is concerned. Richard Branson, one of the world's billionaires, says, well, if there's no deal Brexit by October, uh, it will drive the pound to the ground and have what they call catastrophic uh, impact on Virgin Group, which is a group of companies, has an airline, has almost everything in it. Uh, when billionaires like this uh, talk about Brexit, you need to take... Uh, what they are saying very seriously. Uh, is anyone taking Branson very seriously on this? Oh, certainly. Well, Virgin entrepreneur Richard Branson has never been shy about showing his disdain towards Brexit. And as you said, he's spoken up once again. And this is because Sterling hit a two-year low this week, declining below $1.25 amid poor economic data and political uncertainty. Now, the Virgin Group, as you said, is a huge influential British conglomerate. And Branson has warned that a no-deal Brexit would be devastating for his business, which covers rail, air travel, financial services and media. He went as far as saying a no-deal could lead the company to pull out investment of the UK as a weak pound could cost Virgin up to £100 million a year. Now, during a televised debate between Prime Minister candidates Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson, front-runner Boris Johnson, committed to leaving the EU without a deal on the 31st of October if he fails to secure a withdrawal agreement with EU bosses. And uh, it looks like that's uh, going to be the case. Yes, if, if, if this doesn't go well, uh, perhaps Richard Branson is thinking of perhaps some layoff of workers and things like that. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, Boson. And this isn't the first time we've heard it from Richard Branson. He's always been a staunch Remainer, and we've heard it from several business uh, leaders here in the UK. Of course, manufacturers, we've been discussing this 
on your show over the past several weeks. They are pulling out of uh, the UK. And of course, those PMI figures are not doing great. So, you know, one of the strongest British company owners in the UK standing up and publicly saying that a no deal is no good for us. Hopefully this will signal some sort of sign to Boris Johnson that he must negotiate well with the EU. Yeah, very interesting how the, uh, the whole Brexit is going. The new EU chief uh, was saying uh, on, on television that uh, she would rather want uh, the UK to remain uh, within, uh, within the, EU, the, uh, the zone and, and the bloc. So they're still out there. We still have some way to go before uh, October, but um, nothing, nothing good lasts forever, whatever it is. So October will definitely come someday. But in the meantime, the UK uh, Oil and Gas Authority uh, is... Uh, or auctioning the latest round of oil blocks at the North Sea. It looks like there are so many oil licenses on the table to be picked up. So oil is still king. There are. There are, there are both, and so you better get your uh, checkbook out if you want to pick up one of these. <laughs> the Oil and Gas Authority has opened up applications to explore in large areas of the North Sea and the west of Shetland. There are 768 blocks of part blocks on offer across the main producing areas of the UK continental shelf. That's what it's known as. This is the 32nd round of licensing for exploratory drilling over more than 50 years. But this is the first time that the UK has committed to cutting greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050. So it'll be interesting to see the kind of players that will be coming in because, of course, you'll have to do it under very strict regulations. An industry report in November last year estimated that the UK has enough oil reserves to sustain production for the next 20 years, which is still a lot of money and a lot of drilling to be done. Both and listen carefully, closing dates for applications is the 12th of November, with decisions <laughs> expected to be made in the second quarter of 2020. Uh, no, 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 no. The, the North Sea is just a... Uh, there are folks who are in the oil and gas industry. Um, um, I'm, I'm contented with uh, just drilling for news and information and asking questions, uh, even with <laughs> colleagues for, from colleagues like yourself. And you do the same. I, I, I peddle news and, and information, and I'm contented. I'm, I'm a news merchant. That's what we are. <laughs> I trade in news. We if you say news. so, Boston, if you say so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm drilling. I'm, I'm, I can drill for news and I can check around every day. Thank you so much, Juliana. Come back in the afternoon, lunchtime, and speak with uh, Chimese Obiwago on Business uh, Incorporated. Let's see what else is developing out of London, one of the biggest markets in the world, and of course, still the world's financial center. Thank you.